Huh? Almost there. Looks like we are. Um, this is video lecture number 19, um, and it's on. The digestive system. That's right. So it's Mr. H, Mr. Gan, and welcome to another one. It's gone. So the digestive system. Obviously, where it first begins is the mouth. Excuse me. So, what we're doing right now is mechanical digestion. Thank you. Where the food is, you're chewing up the food. By the way, that's called mastication when you when you chew the food mechanically or physically. And it's where food is basically mixing up with your saliva. It's moistening the saliva, <clears throat> excuse me. And it's making it easier to swallow. And the combination of saliva and food is called bolus. Chemical digestion would be when enzymes break down molecules. So we're eating some carbohydrates right here. We have salivary glands that secrete saliva, and they contain the enzyme salivary amylase. It's got the A, A ooh, A-S-E ending. You know, it's an enzyme. And amylase breaks down starches into sugar. So as we're chewing this, it's actually mechanically and chemically getting broken down in our mouth because it's carbohydrates. All right, so after the mouth, we're going to talk about the, the pharynx and the epiglottis. All right, our pharynx is simply our throat, and which is right along here, this whole area. Mmm, it's moving. Yeah. Um, the epiglottis is that flap that covers the opening to the trachea when swallowing. Um, this is to prevent food from entering our lungs, which then would cause us to choke. So, pretty important. So... Basically, you could technically swallow upside down, even though we don't recommend it. You could do it because of something called peristalsis. Peristalsis is basically wave-like contractions that basically push food down into your stomach. And the way that I imagine it is, imagine if you have more toothpaste left in the tube and you're trying to get it to the part where it's going to come out. What you're doing with your fingers is sort of moving it. That's what's actually happening in your esophagus, peristalsis. So, one of the things oh, wait, that... Hold up. I'm not feeling all that well. It's burning. Is it a painful burning in your esophagus? Yes. It's most likely heartburn. Oh, okay. Which is a very common problem. Um, you'll probably often see people or hear about people having heartburn or you see it on TV. What it is, is like Mr. H said, it's a painful burning in the esophagus. It actually occurs when the lower esophageal sphincter, um, or just the letters L-E-S doesn't tighten as it should and the stomach acid actually backs up in the esophagus mm. which is all this right here um, and it causes that really uncomfortable sensation um, there's some different contributing factors things like um, obesity pregnancy and then certain foods stress and also smoking are all factors that can lead to heartburn heartburn can be easily remedied by taking any over-the-counter medicine um, or anything that you see at the store that will be for heartburn. And it's called heartburn because the place where it's happening is actually right adjacent to your heart. So it feels like it's your heart that's burning, which is why it's called heartburn. All right, so here's the stomach. So your stomach has mechanical digestion. So if you're ever sitting somewhere and all of a sudden your stomach starts to growl and you're like, what the heck's going on with my stomach? There's basically mechanical digestion going on where it's trying to mix everything in. There's also chemical digestion going on. We have something called hydrochloric acid, HCl. It's got a pH of 2, so it's super acidic. And in that environment, we have an enzyme called pepsinogen. That hydrochloric acid, that environment, a super acidic environment, can actually take that pepsinogen and convert it into an active form called pepsin. And pepsin is an enzyme that digests proteins. Notice this, this enzyme does not end with ASE. We also have a mucus lining that protects our stomach from the hydrochloric acid so that the acid doesn't burn through our stomach. Uh, there are secretions that combine with food, so that bolus that we talked about earlier, that 
with food, with the hydrochloric acid, all of it together is going to be called chyme. Okay, so this is a picture of something called a peptic ulcer. Um, essentially what it is, is it's just an open sore in the lining of your stomach, small intestine or esophagus. That occurs when the hydrochloric acid erodes that mucus layer that protects um, that tissue layer. Um, it's generally caused um, when it's an infection of a bacteria called Heliobacter pylori. Um, and you can get rid of it. Um, and then when it does, it increases the city and the risk of esophageal, esophageal excuse me, diseases. Um, other causes of ulcers include NSAIDs and smoking, as says here. Um, they are aggravated by alcohol and stress. So. And that NSAIDs is actually non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, things like Tylenol. As you can see, it looks pretty painful. It's just an open, an open sore, and you know, it def you'll definitely feel it if you do have an ulcer. Absolutely. All right, so here's the small intestine. So here's a cross section. That's what you're looking at. Notice how it's got lots of different grooves in there. All right, this is to increase surface area. All right, so what we call these is they're called villi and microvilli, and their goal is to increase surface area so that you can absorb more nutrients. Uh, small intestine, it does a lot of peristalsis, so again, you don't have to rely on gravity to do all the work for you. So uh, there's peristalsis that, that takes place there, and this is where most digestion takes place, actually. So that question comes up. Remember, it is the small intestine. Okay, so continuing on to what Mr. H said, the absorption of nutrients um, happens in conjunction with that villi that we were talking about. Um, all our small intestine is lined with villa. You know, it increases that surface um, area. Um, and in each side of those villi, or the plural is villus, um, or is that the singular? Villus would be singular. Okay, yeah. villus singular, excuse me. Um, lined with, some cap with things called capillaries and lymphatic vessels. Um, that's actually what is going to do all of that absorption. Um, it's diffused across the membrane between um, the villus um, and then into the intestine and into those cells. Right? Sugars and amino acids diffuse into the capillaries and, and lipids are carried into the lacteals. Um, all these nutrients in the bloodstream are first taken into the liver to be further processed um, before being circulated throughout the rest of the body. So as you can see, here's some diagrams. Here's some villi, um, the intestinal mucosa, the whole small intestine as a whole. And here's a different cross-section with more different types of cells. And if you're wondering why the small intestine and the large intestine get their names, the small intestine is actually way longer than the large intestine. But when you look at their diameter, the small intestine is a lot smaller than the large intestine. That's just the picture to show you that it's all about surface area. That's why we have the villi and microvilli. A little more of that. Remember, more surface area. So here's the pancreas, one of my favorite ones. So this is a pretty awesome picture. So here is our liver. Notice how huge it is, right? Here's the stomach. And then this is the beginning right here. That's the beginning of the small intestine, which is going to go that way over there. All right. There's the gallbladder, which we'll talk about. And then there's the pancreas. It's this stuff right there. See, it's hiding behind the stomach right there. And then it pops out again over here. That's all the pancreas. So pancreas produces something called pancreatic juice, which flows into the small intestine. So what makes up this pancreatic juice is enzymes to break down each type of biomolecule. And then there's something called sodium bicarbonate. And that's there to neutralize the highly acidic stomach acid that's coming into the small intestine because we don't want the small intestine to burn. And then hormones, produces hormones called insulin and glucagon. And these are hormones that have to do with your blood sugar level. So later on when we talk about diabetes, these are the two hormones that we'll be talking about specifically. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about our liver and gallbladder. Our liver is the one that produces bile, which um, is responsible for dissolving fats so then enz enzymes can break them down further. We also have something called the gallbladder, which is this little green thing right here. Um, it's going to store the excess bile before releasing into the small intestine. Very simple. I really like your hat, by the way. Thanks. I like yours, too. Thanks. 
All right. <clears throat> so the cecum and the appendix. All right. So appendix is what we have. A cecum is what our fetal pigs are going to have. So in herbivores, which we're not, the cecum contains bacteria that contain that secretes cellulase. Remember ASE ending? It's an enzyme that actually digests cellulose. Think about where you can find cellulose. It's got an OSE ending, so we know it's a sugar, and it actually makes up plant cell walls. So for an herbivore, it'd be really important to have that. We do not. The human appendix is an immune organ. So oftentimes, I think it's referred to as a vestigial organ. Is it? Well, it has an immune function, so we can't really call it a vestigial organ. Um, it is where B cells, which is a type of white blood cell, mature, and antibodies are also produced there. Okay? Uh, whenever you see GI, I want you to think gastrointestinal. That's what that stands for, gastrointestinal. There's good bacteria that live in the appendix, and they are needed there to repopulate our gut. Something called appendicitis. A buddy of mine had this. It's inflammation of the appendix due to a blockage or an infection, and it could be life-threatening. So if you have appendicitis, you're actually supposed to get it removed. So the question is, can I still live if I get my appendix removed? The answer is yes, you can. It's just that your immune function will probably be lowered just a little bit. And the human appendix is located at the cecum, where the small and large intestines join. So basically, we don't technically have a cecum. So where the small and large intestines join is where you'll find it. Uh, we'll have to show you that on the pig. It sort of looks like a pinky that's sticking out, like a green pinky. And we'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the large intestine. Um, the large intestine is where um, your body absorbs the majority of water from, from the chyme. Right? Here, there's bacteria that grow on undige undigested material and produces vitamins like B and K. Um, I don't feel all that great. I don't know. Are you, is it, do you have, have you been drinking enough water? Or, mm, no, because, no? no, no, Divya was supposed to remind me to drink a lot of water, but she forgot. I don't know. It could, you could be either having some problems with diarrhea or constipation. Oh, okay. Well, diarrhea is occurs when the colon does not remove enough water, often due to something like a bacteria or a viral infection. I don't know. Have you been feeling very well lately? I don't know. You took that day know. off. I did take that day off. But, well, it could also be something like constipation, which is when um, your waist, or what we call feces, moves too slowly through your intestine, and and or water, too much water is absorbed, uh, making your feces dry and hard. Mm. Could be that. Um, so and, what, what exactly is in my feces, a.k.a. my poop? Yeah, well, in your poop is the cells shed from your GI tract, it could be bacteria. It could be just any indigestible material. Um, a lot of cellulose um, is often not quite digested fully, and you can find it in your poop. Yep. Okay. And then waste is stored in the rectum before being expelled through your anus. Okay. I feel like I got to go. Well, you can always, whenever you want. <laughs> Don't hold it. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And this is where you yeah. should go um, if, you, if you really need to. Don't, okay. Don't, don't wait. I may have to do that. Yeah. All right. Um, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, definitely, if you enjoy Mr. H and our matching t-shirts, definitely um, give we're, us a We're like. shooting for like a gazillion Yeah, we're shooting for at least, like. yeah, at least over, what, 115,000 views. We think we pulled this look off way better than Joe. I absolutely think so. Um, our Mario Kart gameplay was also much better than his Overwatch gameplay. I agree, so. and, and much cooler. Absolutely. So, right. we'll see you all in class. Bye, everybody.